Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole, the 4th District of Oklahoma, and this is another one of our congressional chats. Actually, the focus here won't be uh, on Washington, D.C., because neither the, the House nor the Senate are in session right now. At this point in the election cycle, members are home, and those in serious campaigns are uh, working hard in that regard on both sides of the aisle. Uh, obviously, two-thirds of the Senate signed up for an election, so a lot of senators might be traveling abroad, may well be uh, focused on uh, on issues and upcoming legislation. Uh, personally, I've spent most of my time traveling the 4th District of Oklahoma, and uh, it's been a, an interesting uh, uh, few weeks uh, to do that. I've had the opportunity to visit uh, our refinery at uh, in Ardmore, Oklahoma, that's operated by uh, Valero, and hear the concerns that they have about energy and uh, policies that either are happening or might happen going further. Uh, I'm going to have had the opportunity to visit the University of Oklahoma Defense Forum uh, and obviously uh, work there with uh, folks that are interested in bringing more defense research opportunities to the University of Oklahoma. And again, I've traveled around and talked to chambers and, and business groups and places like Blanchard and uh, Ardmore, Ada, uh, off to um, uh, the Tri-City area of Blanchard, Newcastle, and and uh, Tuttle. So it's been a, a pretty thorough uh, visit. And the things I've found are that uh, the number one issue every place you go is inflation. People are very concerned about uh, how much things are costing, not just the gas pump, uh, but uh, the grocery store for sure. And uh, business people are talking about the cost of materials. You talk to farmers and ranchers, and I've certainly had the opportunity to do that as well, visited individual farms and uh, and ranchers, uh, they'll tell you about the cost of production. Uh, and uh, they'll tell you about the challenges they face with the uh, extraordinary drought that we're having in Oklahoma and what that does in terms of uh, getting hay and feeding livestock and uh, what it'll ultimately do to prices going forward. Uh, so that's been number one on uh, the minds of Oklahomans, and I think they expect Washington to address this by spending less money. Uh, most people see the obvious link between the American Rescue Plan and the so-called, and I, I would argue much misnamed, um, uh, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, and express their concerns that that kind of spending makes the price of everything that they need in their daily lives go up. And I, I share that view. So I think that's going to be something that uh, people in this district hope that the new Congress will address uh, beginning in January. I also hear a great deal of concern about the southern border. Uh, people are well aware that we have a record number of people crossing uh, the border illegally. They're also aware that the amount of fentanyl coming across our border is more than quadrupled in the last two years, and that human trafficking is a horrific and real problem uh, on the southern border. And that literally amounts to uh, uh, usually young women, but people being sold in some sort of servitude, usually sexual, uh, and exploited. And uh, they don't uh, want that to happen, obviously. They want that stopped. Uh, they generally want uh, more money invested along the border on everything from infrastructure on the border that would provide barriers to additional border patrol. Uh, and uh, most of them agree with the so-called wait in Mexico policy. That is, you shouldn't be allowed to come into the United States until you establish that you legally have um, a basis for coming and, and uh, asserting asylum. So I hear a lot about that. I would probably guess the next thing I hear the most about is Ukraine. And that's not a surprise in this district. It's a very, very military district with uh, uh, Fort Sill at one end of the district, Tinker Air Force Base at the other. Uh, lots of veterans in, uh, have served and uh, they're concerned both about an increasingly dangerous world uh, and uh, they're also worried that uh, uh, if the Russians succeed in Ukraine, that the Chinese might draw lessons out of that and, and become more aggressive in the Western Pacific. So I, I get uh, quite a few questions on that. And uh, uh, while there's certainly concern about the cost of the effort, uh, I find in my discussions, most Oklahomans think that uh, the Ukrainians didn't start this, the Russians did. Uh, that you have to support people that uh, attack no one but are now trying to defend their own country and are doing so heroically. Uh, they certainly don't want to commit American forces there, but they certainly want America to be as helpful as we can in terms of support, supplies, munitions, weapon systems, and what have you. 
Um, and, and obviously there's a good deal of just discussion about Washington, D.C. Uh, will it become uh, more or less functional going forward? Uh, and I, uh, people are worried about too much concentrated power in the hand of one party or the other. So I expect a spirited election uh, here in the state and um, uh, a lot of public discussion. I would urge you to, uh, which, wherever you stand on any race or whichever party you support, or if you're an independent, you go back and forth as to who you choose, please take the time to vote. Uh, it's an easy thing to do. We have a very secure system in Oklahoma. It's well run. You can vote early if you, you want to. You can certainly vote by absentee if you want to, but uh, by all means, avail yourself of the opportunity that's been provided to you uh, by brave men and women who've put their lives on the line uh, over generations to make sure the United States is not only secure, but it's free and that uh, uh, the, the country is governed uh, by uh, a majority uh, a vote in, in these issues that are before us. Um, finally, uh, I guess one last point, if you have any issues, uh, we're always happy to hear from you at both the district and the Washington office. Uh, we're working hard to try and make sure that uh, Oklahoma's interests are taken care of in the post-election period uh, between uh, the end of the election and the beginning of the new Congress in January. I would expect there will be a lot of legislative activity. Hopefully in that time frame we come to an agreement uh, on the funding of the government uh, and can settle some of the other more challenging issues uh, in front of us but we'll be reporting on that in future editions of, of this particular uh, segment on our website. So go vote, uh, be safe, be secure, and we'll look forward to talking to you again in the near future.